What's up, guys? Willpower here. Uh, Carlos is not able to make it today, so I guess I am hosting. You stuck with me. Sorry about that. Um, Javi should be joining soon. He's having a little technical difficulties. He is restarting his laptop as we speak. We have a good show for you today. We are talking about uh, second base. It's, this is a uh, second base preview. We have top 12 consensus versus my personal rankings, uh, sleepers, breakouts, and busts. So uh, if there's anyone out there that would like to ask any questions while I'm waiting for Javi, now's your time. Um, season's going to be a little different, guys. Uh, the juice ball era is basically done, uh, which is why second base, you're not really going to see that many um, power hitters, you know, as we've seen in the past. Uh, 2019, 2021, we saw a lot of power from second basemen. Um we saw, you know, pretty decent amount of guys that were hitting 25 to 30 home runs this season. We're probably going to be lucky to see even one that's going to hit 31 and Javi's joining us now. So let's go ahead and add. What's up, dude? Can you hear me now? Uh, I can't hear you still. Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> what the fuck? Smile and away, boys. Smile and away. <laughs> All right. Well, while uh, Javi is trying to figure out his microphone connection. Um, so, yeah. So second base, you know, it, it's been kind of filled with uh, a decent amount of, of hitters that have had some decent power in their bat and some decent batting average. But uh, it just seems like um, the, the juice, the juice ball era was the reason for you know, all, all the home runs that we saw from all these hitters. Um, guys like Max Muncy, guys like uh, potentially Brandon Lau, as long as his back holds up, those are the guys that you want to look out if you're looking for power. Um, Marcus Simeon, he's another uh, decent power option. Jose Altuve, obviously those guys are number one and number two. Um, they have a decent power and, and a power speed combination. So those are the guys that you kind of want to focus on in your drafts if you really are looking for a second baseman. And we just lost Javi again, so he's probably going to restart his laptop or um, at least the uh, the program, and hopefully he'll be back soon so we can get the show started. Uh, yeah, like I said, if you guys have any questions or uh, any anything fantasy baseball related or even just baseball related, go ahead and just post it. Um and I will do my best to answer any of your questions. I'm going to log into the Facebook right now on my other laptop so I can see if you guys are uh, saying anything. And hopefully I won't have to log in. Hopefully it's already logged in. Nice. All right. And here it is. All right, Javi, let's go. Let's go. All right, so um, I'm old school, guys. I use paper. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start with uh, the number one overall player at second base, and it's kind of been fluctuating up and down. We've seen... These two guys, uh, whether it's Jose Altuve or Marcus Simeon, kind of go uh, very close to each other. Um, Jose Altuve, when I wrote my notes, he was going at ADP 31 overall, which is, you know, beginning to middle of the third round. So that being said, we have no second baseman going in the first or the second round, pretty much for the reason that I said a couple minutes ago. It's just there's no more power in second base. And with those those big power guys, big power options that we could possibly see later in the drafts, you're going to sacrifice a lot of batting average. You're going to sacrifice speed for those type of guys. So Jose Altuve going at um, ADP 31. He's actually my number one second baseman for this season. I know he's a little bit on the older side, 33 years old. He's a tiny guy, 5'6", uh, 166 pounds. But for being so small, this guy packs a punch. And the the only time that I've actually seen him kind of slow down was in the 2020 season when the Astros were kind of going through their um, their little, you know, well, not little, but the, the scandal, the sign-stealing scandal, 
Uh, but towards the end of the season, Jose Altuve kind of started to get back into his own, and um, he never really looked back since. So we, we've seen the the Jose Altuve of old kind of coming to coming into effect uh, recently again. So that's always good to see. Um, let me go to ADP real quick. So around Jose Altuve, like I said, there's oh. One thing I should mention is that Mookie Betts does have second base eligibility in a few different leagues. So um, if you're lucky enough to get Mookie Betts in the first round, I I really like that pick. Um, personally, if I had the first pick of the draft, I know there's other guys that are going ahead of him. Uh, Juan Soto, Kyle Tucker. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh Aaron Judge, Ronald Acuna, Trey Turner. I personally would go Jose Ramirez, number one. Just that kind of power-speed combo and the consistency in his at-bats. Um, I would definitely go Jose Ramirez, number one, if I had that pick. Uh, but today is second base. So looking at Jose Altuve, uh, right after Jose Altuve, you got Francisco Lindor, Spencer Strider, Aaron Nola, and JT Realmuto. So, um, I don't know. Second base is just, it's, it's the, the position in, in fantasy baseball that has the least amount of value. So if you are, if you are going to get, you know, a, a leg up on your competition on all the other guys in your league, it, it's a good idea to, um, get Jose Altuve or Marcus Simeon when you get a chance. And there's hobby. What's up, man? Let's hear it. Can I hear you? Uh, I can't hear you, man. I'm hoping the I'm hoping it's it's not mine. I'm gonna check on Facebook and make sure that I can hear myself too. Oh yeah. All right, I can hear myself. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Or I hope there's nothing that I have to do to. Uh, I hope it work. is. No, because that mutes your mic. And edit mic settings. Yeah, I don't know, man. Too bad I'm not that uh, tech savvy. Mm. You want to try to figure it out and I'll just keep talking? All right. So, um, Jose Altuve, last season he hit uh, 300. Uh, he did bat a little bit over his, um, over his head. Uh, 269 expect, expected batting average. So um, look to him to hit around 300. I mean, he's always kind of exceeded expectations in, in, in the past, or at least, um, you know, the expected batting average. Um, generally, he's he's around a 300 hitter. So um, pretty consistent with that. On-base percentage is a 387. So he, he's, he walks a lot in, in, uh, in addition to getting a lot of hits. Uh, 920 OPS. So this is this is the big number that we're looking for here because Jose, Jose Altuve last season hit 28 home runs. Um, and in addition to that, he also got 67 extra base hits. So uh, 67 extra base hits. That That's amazing. You, you're actually getting second round value with a guy like Jose Altuve. There's a lot of guys going ahead of him. So once he does come up in your draft, very good option to go for right there. Um, exit velocity is down a little bit, 85.9, but you can't really expect too much from, from a guy that's five, six, um, uh, but playing in Houston, you know, he's a right-handed hitter. So he is going to hit towards that short left field porch, uh, which does help him a lot. He does pull the ball. So, um, that, that's basically the reason why he has so many home runs and 18 stolen bases. You can't, you can't shy away from that also. Uh, now with the bigger bases going to, be into effect in 2023 you're going to see a lot of stolen base sources um you know players that are typically not your you know your prototypical base stealers but um 18 for jose altuve i'm not sure how many he was uh caught stealing last season but um we should see that number increase a bit i wouldn't be surprised if we saw about 25 stolen bases from jose altuve upcoming this season um he's he's definitely a 20 uh, 25 25 guy with home runs and stolen bases so um that's basically why he's my number one at number two we have marcus simeon 
So these guys are kind of going around the same area. Uh, like I said earlier, when I was going through, uh, when I was doing my notes originally, um, ADP for Marcus Simeon is 30. Jose Altuve was 31. I believe that changed a little bit since the last time I looked. Uh, so currently, Marcus Simeon's at 30 and Jose Altuve is 31. Actually, no, it's perfect. It's ex exactly the same. Um, so just like Jose Altuve, you're going to see the power speed combination from Marcus Simeon as well. Last season, he had 26 home runs and 25 stolen bases. So another 20, uh, 25, 25 guy. Now the reason why I have Jose Altuve number one versus Marcus Simeon is really just the batting average. Um, other than that, the power speed combo is, is pretty close. Um, either one of these guys are, are a really good option for your uh, first, for, for the first two second basemen off the board. Um, the thing with Marcus Simeon versus Jose Altuve, Marcus Simeon had 724 plate appearances last season versus Jose Altuve that only had 604. So Marcus Simeon is a type of guy that he's going to need all those plate appearances, all those at bats to try to compile as many runs, home runs and RBIs as possible. Um, and hitting in the top of the Texas order that does help him a lot, especially hitting in front of Corey Seager, Adolis Garcia. Um, so, Marcus Simeon, um, he's, he's a decent sized second baseman, six foot, 195. Uh, he's a little bit on the older side as well. He's 32 years old, kind of similar to Jose Altuve. Really, the, the only really big differences between these guys that I see is, um, is the height and weight advantage that Marcus Simeon possibly has. But because Jose Altuve plays in Houston, um, he has that advantage of, you know, that short field also. That short uh, porch and left. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I uh, still can't hear you, man. Fuck it. This is not working. <laughs> yeah, next time you should just come over. We'll do this together. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was Marcus Simeon. Um, K percentage for both of these guys. You know, you got 14.4 for Jose Altuve. You got Marcus Simeon at a 16.6. Um the launch angle for Marcus Simeon is a bit higher, uh, which makes sense because he does play in Texas. So he's going to need to hit the ball a little bit higher than Jose Altuve does. But uh, basically, these guys are are about the same. Uh, all right. So number three, we have Jazz Chisholm. So Jazz Chisholm has been riddled with injuries uh, his whole baseball career. Um, rookie season was in 2020. You know, everyone's expecting a breakout from this guy. And I, I'm in the same boat, man. And it, it's if this guy can just stay healthy, I mean, they picked him to be on the cover of MLB The Show for a reason. You know, he's not just um, a face. You know, he's not just the face of the Marlins or or whatever the reason is that they chose him. This this guy has huge potential. Um, in in the amount of plate appearances he plate appearances he had, 241 last season, he had 28 extra base hits and uh, 12 stolen bases. So 241, you kind of want to multiply that by like two and a half or so. So he's going to have about 600 plate appearances at least. Uh, we should see a, about 25 home runs and possibly 20 steals from this guy. So the top three uh, second baseman that we have, it's it's a pretty decent power speed combo. Um well, like like I said earlier, we'll be lucky to see more than 25 home runs from any second baseman. Um, but, you know, if, if there's anyone that can, I, I believe that Jazz Chisholm can just because he's one of the younger guys. He's only 25 years old going into his 25 year season. Um, you know, the sky's the limit for this guy. Like he, top prospect. Uh, the Marlins organization really loves this guy. We just really need him to stay healthy. Um had a 254 batting average with an expected BA of 242. So we'd like to see that a little bit higher, which is why another reason why he's three and not one and two, but track record, you know, that's why Jose Altuve and, uh, and Simeon are up there. Um, exit velocity. Now this is a big one that I see from this guy is 90.4. And generally from second baseman, you don't really see the exit velocity getting up into the nineties. So, um, you know, now that the juice ball is gone, this is the type of hitter that you really want to 
want to focus on because uh, 90, 90 mile an hour exit velocity on average, uh, I believe his max exit velocity was over 110 miles an hour. So um, potentially, you know, because this guy is only 25 years old, those extra base hits and those home runs are definitely going to go up. Uh, we'll see how his health is for the in- entirety of the season. Um, hopefully this guy can stay healthy, but you know, we say that about everybody. Uh, the launch angle is good. The K percentage is pretty high, 27.4. You don't want to see that. He had 66 uh, strikeouts and 241 plate appearances. So over the course of a season, that's kind of roughly about 130 strikeouts. Uh, that's a lot. You know, you, you want to, especially from, you know, a second baseman that you're expecting decent batting average from, you want the um, the strikeouts to to total no more than, you know, close to 200, hopefully under, but, you know, that's, that is asking um, a lot from a, a guy that's so young. Um, so going on to number four, we have Ozzy Albies, and Ozzy Albies last year, um, you know, he was, he was another one that just kind of, was just riddled with injuries last season, broke a couple bones early on. He only had 269 plate appearances, um, 47 Ks, you know, that that's, that's pretty decent. Uh, His K percentage was at 17.5. So under 20 is, is pretty good. Um, Launch angle at 16.9. Um, his, his power side is definitely his, the, from the left, which is really good because most of the starting pitchers and, and pitchers that he's going to face, um, are usually right-handed pitchers. So when he hits, um, from the left side, it, it's, it's definitely his best side. So he has more plate appearances from the left side than he does the right. Um, he, he's also a decent source of stolen bases. Uh, he only had three last season, but you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't play much. Um, he's, a, he's another little guy, 5'8", 165. His current ADP is at 49. Uh, I didn't mention before, Jazz Chisholm is at 46. So uh, when you're looking at upside, you know, for, for future, I definitely see Jazz Chisholm as the guy that could potentially be a, um, a first round or second, uh, second round pick in the future. Um, Ozzy Albies, I, I think we've already seen him at his ceiling. So, uh, I, I don't really expect too much from him. I don't really expect too much of a bounce back, but he's always been a a decent source of batting average and, um, and okay at home runs and, and stolen bases. We're definitely not going to see, you know, the, the magical season that he had when I think it was like 20, I don't know, mid twenties home runs. Um, I think he's more of like a 15 home run guy, especially with the type of balls that they're using now. Um, moving on to number five. Now this one's a little bit different. So the, the consensus number five is Tommy Edmond. And I like Tommy Edmond, but it's, there, there's one guy that just, he's, he had the biggest injury of all in the of all second baseman in the past couple of years. And that's Max Muncie. You know, we saw when uh towards the end of the season in 2021, the he just had that really bad elbow injury when he um you know he caught a a, a ball at, at first base and uh you know it was a throw from third, and then the runner kind of just ran into him, jammed his elbow. Um had really bad UCL damage. He never had surgery. Uh, he kind of just like worked it out. The training staff said that it should be fine. He shouldn't need surgery at all. Um, it, it took him a long time to try to, you know, finally get right. He wasn't available in the playoffs at all in the 2021 season. And basically the first four months of 2022, he was just terrible. You know, his uh, batting average was down in like the the 180s and 190s. Um not really much power, but then towards the end of the season, the last two months of the season, we saw the the typical Max Muncie that you know we we see every season, which is like a, a mid 240s batting average with some decent pop. Um, no speed, but you know, when when you're hitting as many home runs as this guy can, um that's that's really why the, the reason why I have him at number six. And even though he, the, the first four months of the season were pretty terrible for him, 
Uh, overall, he hit 196 with an expected batting average of 208 and 21 home runs. So with those first four months that just weren't up to, you know, Max Muncy potential, 21 home runs, it it's probably going to be closer to 30. I think that if there's any second baseman out there that could hit 30 home runs, it's definitely Max Muncy. Um, I would definitely call this guy my comeback player of the year. Uh, I don't I don't see any signs of him slowing down, you know, skill wise. I think it was just the injury that, you know, put him back so far last season. Uh, exit velocity at 90.3. That that was just on average throughout the season. And, you know, just like I said, with the injury, that's probably going to go up as well. Now that he's feeling so good, he actually was on um, a Dodgers podcast recently. And he he said that uh, that his elbows feeling great, that. You know, between 2021 and the in the 2022 offseason, he actually had to just rest and relax. He couldn't do any workouts at all. And it wasn't until spring training of 2022 that he actually started to, you know, um, get out there and, and do some workouts and, and try to get in shape in a very short amount of time. So now, you know, he's the type of hitter that's going to work hard in the offseason. And I think in 2023, he's. He's going to be, you know, the Max Muncy of old, hit, hitting close to 250 with uh, 30 home runs. So um, look to him in categories, leagues, and points, leagues, whatever. This guy is definitely a points league specialist because he walks so damn much. This guy doesn't strike out that often, and um, and the walks are just insane. He, him, guys like him and Bryce Harper and Mike Trout, um, those are the the points league specialists that you know I'm talking about that. Are going to walk a lot. They're going to get on base. They're going to score a lot of runs. So, um, and also with that power, you're going to see a lot of RBI as well in in that Dodger lineup, middle of the Dodger lineup. Um, so his ADP is actually at 134. Um, the consensus number five, Tommy Edmonds at 80. So I have Max Muncy ahead of Tommy Edmond. I know a lot of other people don't out there, but I really think it's just because of the injury from last season. So uh, after Max Muncy at number six, I have Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond, this is where that man strength starts to come into play. 27 years old, going into his age 27 season. The These are the guys that I like to target in the draft. Um, even though I have Max Muncy a little bit ahead of him, Tommy Edmond is not – you know, a, a bad option. He's a stolen base specialist. Uh, last season, he had 32 stolen bases with 13 home runs. But with that man strength coming, I really feel like we could possibly see a little bit closer to 20 home runs, possibly, you know, 17, 18 home runs and about the same um, stolen bases. So a, a 20, 30 guy is, uh, is, is a really good option, especially at his ADP of 80. I think he's a little bit too... Um, early in drafts, I think I, I would take him closer to maybe like 90, um, you know, one round later. There, there's so many other guys that are going around him. Uh, he's at ADP 80. So after him, you have Jose Abreu, um, rookie coming into this season, Corbin Carroll, Brian Reynolds, um, Wander Franco, Byron Buxton, Tristan McKenzie, Robbie Ray. So ah, Tommy Edmond, honestly, I see Jose Abreu right there. If I'm in the middle of my draft and I see those two guys, if I don't have a second, uh, if I don't have a first baseman yet, I'm probably going with Jose Abreu. I much prefer Jose Abreu versus Tommy Edmond. Um, I just look at track record and I know that Jose Abreu is just going to do so much better this season than he did last year new ballpark um he already knows what he has to fix and houston is really good at bringing out the best in all of their players so um so tommy Edmond, 27 years old current adp is 80 batting average last season was 265 expected was 258 so expect him to have close to like a you know 260 270 batting average um his K percentage is at 17.6. And like I said, you know, under 20% is always good. 111 strikeouts in 630 plate appearances. So his, um, his plate discipline is, is pretty decent. Only 46 walks. So it looks like he puts the ball in play a lot. 
Uh, I'm interested to see what his BABIP is, but I don't have that in front of me. So uh, moving on to number seven. So originally I had number seven and number eight switched, but uh, later on when I was, you know, um, going through and just looking at all their stats, I actually switched it up. So uh, the consensus number seven. Uh, there it is. Is Andres Jimenez. Um, well, actually, it's a consensus number six because I have Max Muncy so high. So I honestly, I see this current ADP is eighty five. I really don't understand this, man. It's I don't even have him on the same sheet because I just I don't like him. <laughs> All right, 24 years old, uh, 5'11", 161, uh, plays for the Guardians, you know, dra drafted by the Mets. He had his rookie season with the Mets in 2020. His ADP is at 85, had 557 plate appearances last season, so he definitely played a whole season last year. Um, only 66 runs and 69 RBI. He, you know, I don't know where he hit in the order, but I'm assuming with those type of numbers, he probably hit in the bottom. Uh, 17 home runs and 20 stolen bases. That's probably the reason why he's going so early uh, with a 297 batting average, but his expected batting average is only a 257. And, you know, looking at this guy, seeing his build and and the type of player that he's been throughout his, his uh, major league and minor league career, I really think that we saw the best of Andres Jimenez last season. And this is actually my pick for a bust. I actually have him at uh, my number 12 second baseman. And consensus has him at number six. So um, that's how far apart we are on that one. I don't understand how Andres Jimenez can go first before Max Muncy. I, that, that, that just kind of like um, kind of hit me kind of hard once I saw that. But um uh, slug percentage is 466. His exit velo is 87.8. So that's pretty typical from a from a, um, a second baseman. Um, K percentage is at 20.1. So it's kind of at that threshold where you know that we don't want it to go any higher than that. And you know, being so young, uh, maybe they'll figure him out. He's definitely very pull heavy. He uh, pulls the ball a lot which could explain why his expected batting average is so low. You know, a lot of uh, line drive hits to to the left side of the field um, on the line. Um, yeah, I think that's basically it for Andres Jimenez. So um, I'm going to go back to my rankings. And at my number seven, who's the consensus number nine, I have Brandon Lau. Now, Brandon Lau, two years ago, he hit, mm, where is it at? 39 home runs. In 2021, he hit 39 home runs. Now, that was still the juice ball uh, season in 2021, but 39 home runs. There, This guy could easily hit 25 to 30 this season. He only had eight last, uh, last season, but he also played a partial season. Now, this is... The, the big thing with Brandon Lau is the the back, his back. Um, he had multiple back injuries last season, uh, only had 266 plate appearances. So we've seen with guys like Christian Yelich that a back issue is very scary. You know, Christian Yelich was an MVP back in 2018, something like that. Um, so five years ago, and he just hasn't been the same ever since because of that back injury. Uh, same thing with Clayton Kershaw. You know, Clayton Kershaw was Cy Young contender every season. He was close to MVP every season. And, um, you know, he had that back injury um, from that uh, flight back from Japan. And he just hasn't been the same ever since either. You know, it, it could be a, a, um, multiple things, you know, maybe not just the back injury, but, you know, that it the back injury is not anything to just kind of like, Push to the side. It, it's a pretty significant injury. So hopefully this guy can, you know, get back, uh, get right. And if the back holds up, I, I could definitely see uh, another 30 home run season from this guy. Um, not really too big on the stolen bases. 
but you don't really need that much speed when you have that much power. Um, batting average was 221 last season, which is pretty low, expected at 237. But the season before, in the 21, uh, 2021 season, he batted 247 with a 249 expected BA. So look to this guy to be closer to about 250 batting average. He's, he's actually very similar to Max Muncy. Uh, I think that Muncy, I, I have ahead of this guy only because um, of the lineup that he's in. The Dodgers lineup is just so much better than the Rays lineup. Um, exit velocity is 89.4. It's right at that threshold that, that we kind of want to see the 90 mile an hour and above. Uh, so I see a message from Javi now that, uh, he doesn't know what's going on with his laptop. So I'm assuming that he's probably not going to join the show, which kind of sucks because I don't like doing this by myself, but you know what? I want to give as much information to you guys as I can. So I'm here. Um, all right, so Brandon Lau. Brandon Lau is actually going to be my comeback player of the year. Um, Brandon Lau and Max Muncy are both my comeback players. I, I It was really hard to just choose one, so let's just go with both of those guys. Um, Brandon Lau, his ADP is actually 152. So 152 and Max Muncy was 134 so if you can get either one of those guys later on in your draft good job to you um so if you if you do miss out on those top three um second basemen that we were talking about jose altuve marcus Simeon, and, and jazz chisholm i i i would honestly rather wait and uh skip those guys in the middle and go for either max muncie or brandon lau um and after Andres Jimenez, the consensus number six, we have Glaber Torres, who is my number eight. His ADP is currently at 117. Uh, he's he's kind of a big dude for second baseman. He used to be a shortstop. You know, they, they moved him over to um, to second base. He's 6'1", 205. Um, last season, we actually saw a, a pretty, pretty decent uptick in – in a lot of areas, he had 24 home runs um, in 572 plate appearances, 129 strikeouts, 22.6 uh, strikeout rate. That's a little high, but he's always been that kind of hitter, you know, his his entire career. Um, I think the thing that hurts him the most is he was awesome against the Orioles. And, you know, that, that was like a big story back then. He just – every time he would go to uh, – uh, to – the Orioles Stadium, I forget what it's, Camden Yards. Um, you know, he would just be hitting balls out left and right. I, I think he had like a three homer game a couple times, uh, five home runs in one weekend. But now that they extended left field, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to hit home runs out, which is why Ryan Mountcastle, you know, dropped in uh, value a little bit also. But um, Glaber Torres, you know, he's still in a, an amazing lineup. He's on the Yankees. Um, 257 batting average last year with a 244 expected batting average. So close to 250. Um, that, that's pretty typical with his career. Also, the exit velocity, you know, just like with Max Muncy and, and Brandon Lau, he's at that 90.4 um, exit velocity, 90.4 miles per hour. So he hits the ball extremely hard, especially for a second baseman. 24 home runs. That, that seems kind of low for someone that hits the ball that hard. Um, I think that he has the potential to be able to hit 30 home runs as well. You know, and he's he's been in the league for a decent amount of time, but he's still really young. He's only 26 years old. So give him another season or two to, to get in those man strength years, the 27, 28, 29 um, years. And we could see, you know, a, a possible um, power uh, surge from this guy. Um, moving on to number nine. All right, so the consensus number eight is Max Muncy. Um, we already talked about him. And then 10 is Brandon Lau. Already talked about him. Um, number 11 is, well, number nine. Sorry, I keep on forgetting that they have Mookie Betts listed as a second baseman. I don't really like to put him in the rankings since he's, you know, majority an outfielder. He does have second base eligibility in certain leagues. Uh, I know Yahoo for sure 
not sure what other uh, what other sites. Uh, so Jorge, uh, sorry, um, yeah, Jorge Polanco at number ten. Um, I actually have Jorge Polanco at number nine. Uh, Twenty nine years old, 5'11", 208 pounds. So he's he's the decent sized dude. Um, last season he had four hundred and forty five plate appearances. So most likely had an injury with uh, sixteen home runs, but. It was a couple seasons ago, I think in 2021, he had like 30-something home runs. So that was a Juice Paul era. I, I understand that. But, you know, going from 30 mid-30s home runs down to 16 home runs within a year, I I, I don't see that happening again. Um, I think that he's potentially about a 25 homer guy. Um, not a lot of speed, but uh, batting average was 235 last season. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of getting into like the, the nitty gritty at the bottom of the, the second baseman's right here. Um, Jorge Polanco. Once, once you see this guy in your draft, you gotta, you gotta understand that there's not really a lot of options uh, at second base coming up. So if you're willing to wait for a guy like Max Muncy or, um, or Brandon Lau, then great. You know, those, those guys have the comeback potential. But if you want to play it a little bit safer, uh, Jorge Polanco is your guy. Exit velocity at 89 miles an hour. So that's right at that kind of benchmark that we want to see. Um, launch angle looks really good, 21.7. So this guy should definitely be hitting a lot more home runs. Um, K percentage at 21.3. It's a little higher than we want to see, but that's okay. Uh, as long as he can, you know, hit the the 25 home runs that I'm expecting from this guy, um, I'll take the strikeouts with that. Uh, moving on to the consensus number 11 and my number 10 is Jake Cronenworth. Uh, Jake Cronenworth broke out into the league um, a little bit late in the 2020 season, so he's only been in the league for three years now. Um, he was a 26 year old rookie. He's six foot 187. Uh, current ADP is, is 165. Uh, batting average last year was 239. So I'd like to see that up a little bit, but um, he has a lot of potential. Uh, 17 home runs last year. Um, looks like his 2021 and 2022 seasons were pretty identical other than uh slugging percentage his slug last year was 390 in 2022 it uh in 2021 it was 460 so this guy kind of like lived off the juice ball um that was the you know the whole slam diego season that we saw a couple years ago um so you know he's he's a decent fallback option when there's nothing really else out there uh, currently at 163, I'm going to see who else goes around him. Uh, okay, Jake Cronenworth. So after Jake Cronenworth, you have Charlie Morton, Whit Merrifield, Vaughn Grissom. So you actually have two other second basemen that are only going two and three spots behind Jake Cronenworth, which is Whit Merrifield and Vaughn Grissom. You know, looking at those three guys, if I'm in my draft and I see Cronenworth, Whit Merrifield, and Von Grissom, if you're looking for upside, you definitely want to go Von Grissom. I see, you know, a, a lot of potential in this guy, and so do the Braves. Obviously, you know, they let Dansby Swanson walk, um, let him sign with the Cubs, and now they're starting, or they're saying that uh, Von Grissom is going to be their starting second baseman for the 2023 season. Um, we don't know where he's going to hit in the order because we saw Dansby Swanson hitting, you know, second or third most of the time last season and seasons before. Uh, this guy's probably going to be closer to the bottom for now, six, seven, maybe. Um, but you know, if if he's he definitely has the type of potential where he could have some breakout season and move up in the order. Um, Freddie Freeman's gone, and um, and now that Dansby Swanson's gone, that definitely leaves a hole at number two and number three in the lineup. So. Von Grissom, uh, hopefully he, you know, he can break out and um, and we can see him, you know, have rookie of the year, you know, votes and uh, that that I I think he would be one of the top rated rookies for this season. He he was a top prospect, um, so if you're looking for upside, definitely go with Von Grissom. 
But if you want to try to play it a little bit safer, Jake Cronenworth is fine. Um, okay, let's go back to second base. All right, so like I said, Whit Merrifield going right behind um, Jake Cronenworth. So Whit Merrifield is the consensus number 12. I don't have him at number 12. I think he's going to be um, a bust. He's not my pick for the bust. Um, I think that Andres Jimenez is actually going to be a, a big bust this year. Um, he's actually my number 12 second baseman. And uh, the consensus has him at number six. So you can see how far apart we are. I, I actually prefer, I much prefer Max Muncy over Andres Jimenez. Um, I think anyone that drafts on, on Andres Jimenez, unless you're in a dynasty league or, or a keeper league and you're planning on keeping this guy for a long time just to see what kind of potential he can do, I think he's going to be one of the biggest busts of the of, of any position. Um, so we already talked about all the consensus. So my number 11 is Jeff McNeil. Uh, Jeff McNeil is a little bit on the older side. He's on the wrong side of 30 now. He actually is 30 years old, but he's he's a decent-sized dude, 6'1", 195. Doesn't really have a lot of pop in his bat, but I, I feel like there's not much that he would have to change to be able to get those power numbers up. Nine home runs last season, only four stolen bases last season, but a 326 batting average. So uh, his expected batting average was 280, which is not very uh, not very high. But there's a lot of guys that you know the expecting expected batting average just doesn't really play out in their uh, their actual like play. Uh, so I I actually prefer Jeff McNeil over Whit Merrifield over. Um, Possible uh, comeback player, Jonathan India. Um, Jeff McNeil is actually at ADP 183, which is, it's, it's pretty, pretty up there. So, um, you know, this, this is the type of guy that you can wait on. I, I feel like, you know, at his K percentage of 10.4, only had 61 strikeouts and 589 plate appearances, points leagues. Uh, okay. So I, I actually should point this out. Jeff McNeil, he's my number 11 in points leagues. In categories leagues, I definitely wouldn't be drafting this guy. 73 runs, 9 home runs, 62 RBI with 4 stolen bases last season. Um, so if you're playing in categories or, or roto, I would definitely hold off on this guy. Um, but, you know, looking at the at my number 12, Andres Jimenez, who had – uh, 17 home runs and 20 stolen bases with a 297 batting average. Like I said earlier, I think that's his ceiling. I don't think we're going to see any better from this guy, even though this guy is only 24 years old. Uh, I, I just feel like this is the type of player that people are just not going to be satisfied with. They're, they're going to expect a lot from him, and it's just not going to be there. Um, I think pitchers are just going to figure him out. You know, had somewhat of a breakout season last year, uh, but I prefer – the uh, the veteran in Jeff McNeil um, gets on base a lot, and um, let's see his on base percentage was a 382, and slugs not so bad either 454 last season. Uh, exit velocity is low, launch angle is low, but the K percentage is low as well. So um, you know it's a give and take. Uh, second base is not loaded like we've seen in the past few seasons. So. Um, that that's basically it. We, I, I went through all 12 of my, uh, top 12, um, gave you a breakout, a bust and, um, oh, the sleeper, my, my sleeper is actually going to be, so I'm going to say my, my comeback player is Max Muncy and my sleeper is Brandon Lau. Um, the reason why I'm saying Max Muncy as my comeback player is because, He's been in the league a little bit longer, and um, this is the this is the type of guy that you want to see the consistency come back. Where Brandon Lau just had that one amazing season, um, and I think that it's possible to have something similar to that again. But um, only time will tell. 
I know you guys are doing your drafts soon. So if you guys have any questions, uh, you know, whether it's about drafts or just anything in fantasy baseball in general, you can email us at realtalkbaseball at yahoo.com. Uh, you can go to our Instagram page, Real Talk Baseball, or our Facebook page, Real Talk Baseball. You can send us messages on there. And um, now that, you know, the baseball season is coming up pretty soon, um, I'm I'm more active on the Instagram and Facebook now. I wasn't really so much in the off season. I was, you know, enjoying the time with the family and, and playing some disc golf and, you know, just uh, living life. But um, baseball season is back. I'm excited. I'm uh, here to help you guys. And uh, thank you for uh, tuning into the show. And uh, next week we will have the third base preview for you. So uh, top 12 third baseman, my rankings versus ADP. And um, uh, sleepers, breakouts, and busts. Hopefully Carlos and Javi will be back next week. And um, if not, I will I should be here for you guys. I got to check my days off. But um Yes, I, I will try to be here next Friday. If not next Friday, then most likely Saturday. Uh, that's the end of the show. Again, if you have any questions, you know, reach out to us on, on uh, our email, Instagram, or Facebook. And this is Will Power signing out. Thank you, guys.